everyone so welcome back to my channel and today i'm really excited to be sharing with you guys this thing that i made uh basically i've been sketchbooking for the past two weeks and i'm so glad i got able to sketchbook i got able to sketch i'm so glad i was able to sketchbook because i haven't been able to do it for so long as you guys know i haven't released a sketchbook video on this channel in like ages so this is the one that i've been working on and i've officially completed it was also an assignment for class so that's probably why i was able to complete it so fast because like i said two weeks was all i had i also hand bound and handmade basically this entire thing this is a kettle stitch binding if you guys were wondering so there's that and then also the cover was handmade and then you know the paper i used is arteza watercolor paper i'm just gonna put that out there because i know people are gonna ask me also as for materials i used windsor newton watercolor microns and copic opaque white which is um this thing i talk more about materials in the video that i made where i actually drew one of these so if you guys want to go see that video where i paint one of these i will link it for you guys right there also in the description so please go watch that if you have any questions about the process of this because that's basically how i made this i take you guys through step by step of how i illustrated one of these but this assignment was basically a informational piece that he wanted us to make and so this one is on australian marsupials i have the backstory of this is basically in, I think, sixth grade, world history. For some reason, we focused a lot on Australia, and for an entire, like, two weeks, we talked about marsupials, and a lot of the information has just stuck with me. It's kind of a joke that, like, I know a little too much about marsupials, so I kind of talk about them a lot, so I wanted to make this because I actually knew most of the information in here already. Like I said, I kind of treated this as a sketchbook, so I was able to do whatever I wanted in it, as long as it was also informational for the assignment. So that's basically what I did, and I'm just here to flip through it with you guys. I am so excited. So let's go through and look at this. Okay, so let's just get started with this flip through. So as you can see, here's the cover of what it looks like. It has um, this really nice paper on it. It's kind of cottony. I'm not sure what kind of paper this is actually. On the cover it says Australian marsupials and I just kind of drew that on vellum paper and cut it out like this and just stuck it on here and I did the same thing with my name at the bottom. Everything in here is hand illustrated by me and also I did it with microns and Windsor Newton watercolors. And like I said, the paper's Arteza paper so I just want to get that out there before I go through this because everyone's gonna ask me. And it is hand bound so I did a kettle stitch binding for the spine and I left it exposed because I really like the way it looked and it's done with gold thread. So let's just get started with the flip through. So here is the first page. And in the first page, I just did some information about Australia. So this is all about Australia and I'm not gonna read all of it because I mean, you guys can pause and read all of it if you want to, but I think it's more interesting when you look at the pictures. So I'm not gonna go through everything, but I have little titles for everything about different like subjects that I'm talking about. And I also have these little envelopes with information in them that I have added on almost every page. Basically, this information right here is just about Australia. So I have some history about Australia and how marsupials came to be and what exactly they are and the history of marsupials that started in North America and then ended up a lot of them in Australia and I have some more information here about Antarctica which seems kind of random but it actually makes sense when you know the history of marsupials but yeah that's some boring stuff about information but this is the first and second page and I numbered them all at the bottom and then we have this opening page marsupials of Australia and then we go into the sugar glider so this is the first page that I did every single animal has the same formatting which is a subject header kind of thing, a title I guess, and then they have their scientific name down here. And then I usually have one main illustration for each of them. So this one is a little sugar glider and he's so cute and I love him. So these were all done with watercolor. So there's that. I talk about the habitat and appearance and them as pets because some people have them as pets. I loved painting these. Oh my god, I love hyperrealism so much. So painting these was just so enjoyable for me. And here's a little sugar glider munching on a little fruit. He's so cute. Oh my god. Actually, this is a flower, not a fruit. Ignore me. And then next page, I talk about nesting and I got to draw a bunch of them. They're so cute together. They all kind of sleep together. And look at this one. He's like, oh my god, what's going on? And also in a lot of these, I have little like add-in blurbs where I draw little arrows and stuff just because I like doing that a lot. 
but yeah, that's them. And then here's a close-up of their hand. I tried to do some close-ups of the animals' bodies and stuff just so that like people would know what I'm talking about. But here they talk about nesting and how they sleep together in a colony and stuff. And this is grooming and how they groom each other with their fancy little hands, looking so fancy. And then this is a little folder on the colony of sugar gliders. So I wrote, Members of the colony have specific roles such as hunters, gatherers, builders, and other roles that help build and maintain the nest. Scouts look out constantly for them. A pair of alpha male and female are in charge of the colony and are the top breeding pair. Some roles are even classified as babysitters. So that's the first little blurb of information I have in there. Very cute. I try to keep things cute, but I also kind of wanted to make it like look really nice. There's a weird blend of hyper-realism and also really cute. Uh, typography. So I say, so how do they glide? And then I have some more information on that. And then this is one of the sugar gliders gliding when they open up their little arms and they're so cute. So here he is. And that's the last page. Oh wait, no, there's actually one more page of the sugar gliders. So every animal has like four pages, one, two, three, four. And so this is the last page about sugar gliders and their babies. And this baby is on her back. So cute. I love them. So this is one I did on this channel. If you guys haven't gone and watched it, you guys should go watch it. I'll link it in the description for you guys. But yes, go watch this video. But here it is. Very cute. This is the final one of what they look like. And then we move on to the koala. So the koala, as you can see, is a koala. <laughs> I talk about their living, their diet. And their diet is like really extensive because they have a really weird diet of eucalyptus leaves and stuff. And then here's a leaf. And here is a cute little koala sitting in a tree doing dumb things because they're super, super dumb. <laughs> so yeah, there's a koala. And then this is some information on the eucalyptus leaf. Like I said, a lot of information on their diet just because they do a lot of stuff. So this one says, there's a misconception that koalas become intoxicated by the eucalyptus leaves they consume and that's why they sleep so much. This, however, is not true and koalas just sleep a lot due to their metabolism. Koalas are the only animals that can survive on a diet of just eucalyptus leaves, and many would die from the toxins. Eucalyptus globe I don't know how to say this, globalis, is also known as blue gum, and eucalyptus trees are sometimes referred to as gum trees. So that's just some more information on eucalyptus leaves and stuff. And I have a couple of them on the side that look like they're taped in scientific illustration style. But yeah, very cute. More information on the eucalyptus leaves, and I talk about their appearances because they look really distinct, so I wanted to talk about that. And then here is a nice big illustration of a koala with a baby koala, also known as a joey, on her back. And here's another close-up of the hand, like I said. For this one, you can see some of the marks that I made from drawing them out. So I did sketch these out before watercoloring them. I did them in a watercolor pencil so that most of them faded. But as you can see here, I didn't bother getting rid of it because it's not that noticeable. But I just wanted to point that out. And then... <laughs> this page is really funny just because this is the only illustration I have but he just looks so kind of like dumb and stuff but I love him regardless so here he is they can't run but they can swim so koalas can swim apparently yeah long story short they can swim so moving on to the wombat here's some drawings I did of the wombat just kind of walking around this is one in their burrow sleeping and then their butts I talk about their butts for a while because their butts are important. Basically, they're really strong. They use it as a defense mechanism, which is so funny. And then also here's some more drawings, wombats. And I love this one because he's so little. And look at his little like legs and toes and stuff. I love him. Um, but yeah, and then the last page for the wombats, I have a lot of these little things of information just because there's so many random things about wombats. So let's just go through them. So burrowing. Wombats have evolved to become master digging machines. They have strong claws and feet to help them dig their burrows. So that's about how they burrow and, you know, their body and stuff. This one's called digging deep. So this one says, a wombat's burrow is deeper than you think. Many wombat's burrows are at depths of 650 feet where they spend most of their time. That's really deep. That's like 65 floors but obviously it's not straight down it's like the, the you know <laughs> this one says strong claws and wombats have incredible strong claws that help them dig their burrows they're able to clear up to three feet of dirt per night for their burrows yeah just more information about digging because you can never get enough information about digging and this one says big bones which is wombats have a thicker diameter to their bones when compared to other animals of their size their skeleton is robust to support their muscles so here are the four little ones and then this part i actually messed up i don't know if you guys can really tell unless i get really close 
but yeah i messed up on the spelling of wombats so i had to tape over a sheet and rewrite wombats but i think it isn't even that noticeable and yeah no one questioned it during crit so i don't think it was a problem moving on to kangaroos so this is a kangaroo i think most people know what a kangaroo is but this is what he looks like and he's very very cute and so soft and there's a little baby kangaroo in his pouch that's the illustration for that um when i talk about hopping and how they hop because basically kangaroo's legs are like joined like they can't separate their legs they're like always hopping they can't like actually walk like this which is really interesting and really weird so that's what i talk about there and then on the next page i have a zoom in of their foot because their foot is kind of terrifying looking not gonna lie and then is hopping difficult and i talk about like how far they hop, how much they hop, all that stuff. Lastly, I talk about kangaroo fights because kangaroos, like I said, can't, since kangaroos can't separate their legs when they fight, they kick out with both their legs at the same time while using their tail to keep balance. Kangaroos are really weird about fighting, so I wanted to talk a bit about that and there's that drawing. Also a diet about how they eat and then their teeth hopping from one place to another. And then a baby kangaroo. This is pretty much life-size, if not bigger than what an actual baby kangaroo looks like when they crawl out of the pouch. It's really weird. But basically that's how marsupials function, is that they're born and then they crawl into their pouch and then they further mature in the pouch and stuff like that. And there's a little baby Joey, which looks really cute because his feet are even bigger for his body than possible. And then we have the Tasmanian devil, which is one of the last animals, second to last, that I did. That's when I talk about living because Tasmanian devils are found primarily on Tasmania Island and they used to be found in Australia but not really anymore. So there's a whole story about that and then their habitat size and sleeping because they're nocturnal. And do they eat everything? Tasmanian devils are basically scavengers so they basically do eat everything and they fight a lot. Yeah, so I talk about how aggressive they are, how devilish they are, how they got their name, which is basically from the sounds they make and stuff like that. I have little pictures. This one is of him yawning, but you can see his teeth and his jaws like that. So I decided to use that pose. And then also there's fighting and mating season. So there's some information about that. And then why are they dying out? So Tasmanian devils have a big thing about dying out, which is so, so sad. And I did a whole thing on it. So double facial tumor disease is the reason why they've been dying out. And basically, if you guys aren't aware, Tasmanian devils are affected by this facial tumor disease that they can get. Basically, once you get it, Tasmanian devils will have about one year left to live before they die from this disease. So on here I have some information that says Tasmanian devils often fight with each other and biting one another is quite common among these aggressive animals. This however has been problematic. DFTD, also known as devil facial tumor disease, is primarily transmitted through biting and has a 100% mortality rate. Because these animals are very interactive with each other, their numbers have declined. It's a really sad thing. It transmits through biting and obviously they bite each other a lot. So a lot of Tasmanian devils have been dying out because of this. Scientists are working for a cure, but it's just really sad and treatment. Humans have been interfering in hopes of curing Tasmanian devils of this disease. There have been some successful trials, but there is still a lot of research to be done. So they're working on it, but they haven't found a 100% cure yet. That just makes me really sad when I think about these cute little guys. And also, of course, habitat decline is another issue that they've been facing just because humans have a tendency to do that. But yeah, having a disease that affects all of them is just terrible so i did a whole page on that and then moving on to the last animal i did this is the quokka and if you guys don't know about the quokka i feel like i went from some more common australian marsupials like the wombat and the koala and the kangaroo and stuff and i started moving to like more lesser known ones like the tasmanian devil and the quokka so that was kind of my formatting for this but the quokka is a really cute little guy and he's kind of instagram famous so quokkas basically live um, I talk about location, size, diet, lifespan, people. Quokkas live on Rottenest Island. And I have some information on here because it's a huge tourism event. And so, quokkas have become very popular due to social media. Many tourists visit Rottenest Island to visit the quokkas and take selfies with them. This has raised a lot of awareness for their habitat loss. Rottenest Island is a protected nature reserve for quokkas in order to protect them from going extinct. This tourist attraction has become extremely popular. Quokkas are known as the happiest animal on the planet because they have like a constant smiling face, which is so, so, so cute. Can I get him in? Go in. Yeah, their faces are really cute and they just always look like they're smiling. And that's why people have been taking so many Instagram pictures with them. 
and they've been getting pretty famous off of that so yeah kind of social media famous and here's another one of the little quokka stickies head out the pouch because i think a lot of people have a hard time imagining like what the pouches look like because they don't look like cartoon pouches where there's like a literal slit so here's a picture of a little baby sticking his head out and they're also known for throwing babies because their defense mechanism basically they will sacrifice their baby if they have to and so they will throw their baby out of their pouch to avoid predators and Here's some information about socializing. Quokas are sociable among humans due to the tourism amongst each other. However, quokas live in colonies but prefer to keep to themselves day to day. So they're rather introverted, I would say, but can be extroverted when there's people around. So they're super friendly to people usually, and that's why there's so much tourism and stuff. And they can also climb trees and they have a whole thing on how they're able to delay impregnation due to like lack of resources and stuff so there's a bunch of stuff about that that i talk about and then also rules for tourism tourists are drawn to the island by the internet famous selfies with quokas tourists are not however allowed to touch or feed the wild quokas they're allowed to see them and there's a bunch of them on the island they used to be found on australia too but now they're not really there anymore that's pretty much it this is the last little splash pager hat that says marsupials of australia and then the last thing i have is just the index that has the page numbers and the different subjects and it also says additional information on marsupials can be found from page one to three in the end and also oh i should note that these are all handwritten i think that's pretty obvious but some people in class said that it looks like i typed it which i did not so yeah, that's pretty much everything through here. Like I said, I spent about a week and a half on this, two weeks probably. This was a two week assignment, but obviously I can't devote all my time to this. So I had other assignments to do while I was doing this, but this is pretty much everything. And yeah, I'm actually very proud of it. I really liked how this project ended up coming out and I'm really glad I got to kind of sketchbook again because I haven't been able to do that in a long time. Okay, so that was pretty much everything that was in here. And I'm so glad you guys stuck through to the end of the video. This is something that I'm actually really proud of. I haven't made much that I've been really proud of, to be honest. And I'm also really glad that I got to hand bind a sketchbook because I've always wanted to do that, but I really haven't been able to. But also for my next assignment I'm doing right now for a different class, I'm also hand binding sketchbooks and I'm so excited. Oh my God, I love that assignment. I love the assignments I'm getting at RISD for sophomore year so far. Hopefully second semester treats me as well as first semester kind of nervous about that but i've been loving doing these assignments also i just want to put out there everyone's like desperately been asking me for a nail tutorial i will do a nail tutorial over thanksgiving break as soon as i'm home but for now i haven't been doing my nails these are press-on nails so if you guys want a nail tutorial for this you literally just go and buy these press-on nails at your local cvs because that's what i did i want to put that out there because i didn't do these nails by myself even though a lot of times on this channel i do do my own nails so yeah but also this assignment is something that i'm really really proud of so i'm actually really happy about it and if you guys want to see close-up pictures of any of this stuff it's always on my instagram right here you guys should go check it out it's always there everything you need to know about this project is there also i just want to show you guys really quick because you stuck through to the end of the video i think you deserve this i recently finished this project which is another little book and the cover is really similar so i think it's really but it's called the chef's pasta and it's basically don't judge a book by its cover because the inside is a six foot long snake named the first page says this is noodle and then the very oh my god the very last page says noodle is a snake so i just wanted to show you guys that because this has not even been released on my instagram yet but i figured you guys should get a sneak peek of it but look how pretty it is i love the cover i spent a long time trying to figure out how to make the cover something i actually like because it originally was terrible um but yeah, that's all I have to say about it. But back to the point of this video is this project. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys were wondering, yeah, like I said, I have a video on drawing one of these too, but I just actually really liked how this turned out and how much freedom I got to do with this. And I've also been wanting to bind my own sketchbook for the longest time, but I just haven't been able to because I haven't really had a reason or opportunity to sketchbook lately. So I've been trying to sketchbook in all of the projects that I can. And so this was such a good opportunity to do that but yeah that's pretty much it for this and i'm so glad i'm actually so happy with how this turned out like i finished this like a while ago like it's been like a week or two and i still am in love with it so that's how i know i actually like like it because a lot of times as soon as i finish a project i'm like wow i hate this but especially this illustration of a koala and then also the first illustration oh that one too and then also the first illustration of the 
sugar glider are my favorites and I love the way they turned out but thank you guys so much for watching and let me know what you guys think and I'm so sorry I haven't put out a sketchbook video in so long but as soon as the semester is over these two sketchbooks will be done and I'll be able to release these I didn't want to go through too much of these just because they're not close to being done yet I'll have two more sketchbooks for you guys and also my final drawing project is basically a bunch of sketchbooks so I know you guys love sketchbook videos I do too honestly I love making sketchbooks I just haven't had time to go through and fill any sketchbooks but yeah like I said this one I finally finished and I'm so glad that it turned out like this and I hope you guys enjoyed it but that's pretty much everything I have to say so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and for watching this video and for looking through these with me and that's pretty much it so thanks stay hydrated take a nap and I will see you when I see you bye check out my Instagram for full pics